Debbie Badlinder from Community Agency for Social Inquiry, which is a research NGO based in South Africa. The context is that we have a constitution after the end of apartheid that is very strong on rights and equality. The constitution also gives rights to custom. And the question then arises, what happens if customs are discriminatory uh, or undermine rights? One of the things we wanted to do with this research was to challenge the idea that customary law is necessarily bad for women. And we were doing that in line with the recognition by our courts of what is called living customary law. That customary law is not what was written down by the magistrates, but that customary law in its very nature changes over time as communities and their leaders adapt to living to, to different circumstances. So we wanted to capture what is happening actually on the ground. A lot of the focus on what happens to women is on widowed women. You know, what happens when your husband dies? Or women within marriage, they're reg regarded as minors and they don't have any rights. And we said, what about women who never marry? What about other sorts of women? The finding is, I mean, it's much more diverse than we had even thought. I mean, we wanted to say there's not one single pattern. And that's why we did three different areas. What has astounded me is that within each of these areas, there is great diversity. We definitely have easily proved that women have access to land. To some extent, the women seem to be claiming more access than we thought they would. It's also got to partly be that these are all rural, depressed, poor, and rather miserable areas. And they're actually, the overall population is female dominated. So the men aren't there to exert control. You're not dealing with one's um, conception of a normal society. And, and that goes back to the issue that they're not all living in neat nuclear families. And they're not even living in neat traditional families. One of the things that I perhaps should stress, and here I think South Africa is different to the rest of Africa to some extent, is the low, ex the, the, the low extent to which people are actually using land for agriculture. It's about having a secure place to live, you and your kids, and not being chucked out, more than about having a field to work on or a garden. People feel very strongly about land right. uh, in South Africa, and I think that's linked to our history. So even if you're not going to grow anything on it or anything like that, it's like land has been taken away. That's historically what has happened. So there are very strong emotions right. attached to it. And there is a move within the South African government now to give chiefs and the traditional authorities more power again, and communities on the ground are not happy with that. We, as researchers, we are often a little bit simplistic and saying here is a policy recommendation for government, assuming that government is one thing. And we say, well, we'll take it to the ministry of this. Actually, on an area like this, it's, it's much more complicated.